This is Late Night Health, the radio show and internet video program that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. I'm Mark Allen, and today, along with Dr. Greg Saleo, we're going to take a look at something that I think is really important, and that is artificial sweeteners. Last week, we talked about the real stuff. This week, we're going to talk about the artificial stuff. Dr. Saleo, nice to talk to you again. Hey, Mr. Mark, how's it going? It's going super. And of course, uh, we're recording this the week of, um, of July 4th. And I'd like to just start by saying it is wonderful that we live in a country where we have the freedom to choose the kind of health care that we want. Well, maybe not 100 percent, but we're, we're working toward that. Yeah, well, you, you do. You do have your choice. I mean, when you go in the store, it's amazing to me to walk in a grocery store and you know, I, when I was a kid, I used to work in a grocery store, but it's just amazing to see when you walk in all the different products that you have. I mean, there may be 50, 60 varieties of, of one type of substance there. And it's just amazing. But you have choices. You just have to know what you're looking for. Uh, so, you know, I was reading a research article that was concluded in 2017. And what they did was take 3000 people over a 10 year period that drank diet soda. And they found that those people were three times more likely to have a stroke or Alzheimer's disease or dementia. Wow. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, you go out with uh, a friend or a business associate and they eat a sandwich uh, uh, with diet soda or an ice cream sundae or a piece of pie with diet soda. That just cracks me up. Yeah, well, I, I see that too. I mean, it, it's not uncommon that somebody will come in to me and, and they'll say, gee, you know what? Yeah, I smoke, but I exercise, I exercise a lot. Does that make a difference? <laughs> it's kind of like, well, you know, one doesn't take care of the other. What about uh, if you exercise a lot and eat not great? Same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, it, you, don't, you don't get something for nothing and everything has its risks. So, you know, eating bad becomes a problem, and especially these non-caloric artificial sweeteners, which we've seen for so long, right? We've seen it forever, back in the 70s. Back in the 60s? Back in the 60s. Well, yeah, I was just a kid, so... <laughs> well, I remember my grandfather drinking um, a soda with um, saccharin, and then they, they, they announced that saccharin uh, was carcinogenic. And they were taking it off the uh, the market, and I found it interesting because I couldn't stand the taste. It was, I mean, forget the health. I couldn't drink a whole can of the stuff. Yeah, well, you know, they have saccharin, aspartame, sucralose, uh, sulfame. Uh, yeah, probably there's there's even more. And wow. so the problem with saccharin is way back when they determined that it causes cancer uh, in rats, bladder cancer. But the problem is, is they haven't been able to duplicate that in humans. So it did have a cancer warning back then, and they've taken the cancer warning off at this point. You mean saccharin is still is now available again? Well, I don't know how available it is, but I'm not necessarily believing it. You know, way back when you heard about the whole rat studies and they fed them a ton of saccharin and right. they developed a, a, a bladder cancer. But I'm not going for it. I'm not going down that path. Well, I don't want to, I, I won't drink it for the two reasons. One, of course, is the, the, the fact that it's, it's, uh, it doesn't taste good and I know it's not healthy. And at the, then the next thing is that it, 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 it's carcinogenic or supposedly carcinogenic. And I think I remember something about that study in that you, a human would have to eat like 20 pounds of saccharin a day to get the same results. And nobody's going to do that. Well, and the, the problem is, is the length of these studies. Uh, that becomes a problem because how do you really know? You know, like I mentioned, that one study was 10 years. Uh, are people really going to sign up for that study? And how do you really estimate what's really going wrong with them? Because there's so many variables. So, uh, but then you have aspartame, right? It's a combination of a couple of different amino acids. And it can become a real problem. Is that the pink one or the yellow one or the blue one? Do you know? Boy, you're asking the wrong guy. 
I mean, yeah, you, know, I you go, you know what I mean? You go and sit down at a, at a restaurant and they have a little, they have, you know, raw sugar, they have uh, cane sugar, and then they have the three artificial sweeteners there. Yeah, I mean, you, you would have to, to know them if you use them. And I don't use them, so I'm not really sure. I do remember saccharin is pink. Uh, I know there's a blue one, which maybe, maybe it's NutraSweet, which is aspartame. Um, and then there's a, a, a yellow one, which could be sucralose, I think it is. Right. What is sucralose? Is that really artificial? It sounds, in quotes, natural. All right, so sucralose or Splenda is where they take a glucose and they remove three hydrogens and attach three chlorides. Uh, yeah, so uh, they say that it is not an issue, but when you heat it, it can become a problem and cause cancer and also causes a problem with your gut microbiome, which can cause problems with everything. Well, I know that if we were to take, uh, do an experiment, put in a Petri dish, cane sugar, pure cane sugar, in one, and then right next to it, uh, one of these artificial sweeteners, ants and other bugs would go to the sugar. Well, of course, but because then, these, these non-caloric artificial sweeteners don't have any nutritional value. Their whole thing is to get you to taste the sweetness and pass through. Um, and that can become a problem, right? So, for yeah. example, like I mentioned, the, the sucralose, they're using it in baked goods, and when you heat it, it changes the structure or, or the uh, byproduct of it um, can cause cancer. I know that uh, in, in the last year or so, uh, they've done some research on coffee, and the heating of coffee releases a an enzyme or a chemical compound that is a known carcinogen. And so it's the same kind of thing with sucralose? Uh, that's what they're saying. And so, I mean, uh, for me, I stay away from all these. I mean, you know, the aspartame, you have so many different issues. It's an excitotoxin and you can have brain cell dysfunction and degeneration. Um, you know, they have byproducts that are linked to lymphomas and leukemias. So, you know, you, you tend to stay away. There's a new one, uh, acesulfame. Uh, I don't know how new it is, but they call it ACE-K for short, uh, or you may see it as called Sunnet or Sweet One. And it's known to have problems with thyroid and even cancer. Oh, why would anybody in their right mind, if they want to have some sweet, not just minimize the amount of sweet that they eat that's natural, like a raw sugar. And I know we're, we're neither one of us are big on, on sugar, but it would seem to me if you eat that in moderation, it's much better than eating a lot of these chemical uh, chemical forms of sweetener. Yeah, would you would think so? You know, if you look at if you look at diet sodas, or I'm sorry, regular sodas, you have, uh, for example, a Pepsi has eight teaspoons of sugar, while a Coke has nine, and 33 grams of of sugar. Uh, so, and the sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose. And we talked the uh, a couple of weeks ago about what fructose does to your liver. So. Uh, the sugar issues can cause obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, liver problems, high blood pressure, dementia, heart disease, cancers, dental issues, and um, even have been linked to breast, throat, and colon cancer. Oh, my. I, do you remember uh, warning labels on cigarettes in the 60s? When they... I, I don't remember the labels that they had. Do you, do you remember them? Well, I remember them talking about adding them and then years later when i was uh, doing you know talking about it i remember a study that the federal requirement was to put the warning on the pack of cigarettes in a certain size font it had to be a minimal font size well they put it on bigger because they discovered through testing that bigger font size meant more cigarette sales. People just believe that they're immortal, especially young people. Well, you and I both grew up there. We know, we know that we were back then, sure. Uh, and, and still today, people don't necessarily have the awareness. They're not aware of what's happening with their nutrition. And they just think that it's calories and carbs and you know the simple stuff, and it's not that simple. Um, you, you, there's no free lunch with any of this stuff. Right. right. 
you, you create a problem by consuming excess quantities of any particular thing. Like I mentioned to you before, even if it's broccoli, uh, and you're going to have a problem. And the artificial sweeteners are even more of an issue. But if you eat a lot of broccoli, the, uh, the, uh, the side effect is that the energy crisis could be solved. Oh, there you go. Right. And, you know, uh, sodas are a big thing, not only the sugars or artificial sweeteners, but a lot of them has phosphoric acid, which can create kidney stones and osteoporosis. So that, doesn't that at leach, as I understand that phosphoric acid uh, potentially can leach calcium from bones, making it more brittle, which is, I guess, what yeah, you just said. Yeah, it, it can create osteoporosis. So, I mean, there are natural sodas out there, and I, I drink my share of natural sodas. I mean, uh, but here again, within moderation. Right. There's certain foods that a soda just tastes good with. Well, especially that. You know, it's I'm doing a lot more of the um, um, prebiotic and probiotic type of drinks out there, which are great, and they really help satisfy your, your taste. Have you tried the... Um... I'm trying to think of the uh, probiotic. Uh, it's it's got uh, it's a very strong vinegar flavor. Sure, sure. Those are great. Apple cider vinegar drinks. Um, Kavita makes a great one. Uh, and in fact, I like a lot of their other uh, drinks as well. They're fantastic. And you can look, and they have a lower carb type of uh, right uh, of of ones as well. Yeah, and it's it's all it's a natural sugar. Um, it, it reminds me, I never ate gummy bears, uh, a vinegar sour patch something. I never ate those because they didn't like them. And these drinks, some of these drinks taste like that to me. You yeah, know, some just super sour. Some have some have that flavor and others don't. Um, I like a combination of them. I think they're great. And you rotate what you drink. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. So the, uh, the you know, I know that in talking with with nutritionists and you are one yourself that people like change in their diet very few people like to eat the same thing every day for dinner seven days a week they want different things so well well i know that that sounds right but what i'm finding is the exact opposite uh it's not uncommon that somebody will make a big pot of spaghetti and have that for the entire week right or they drink, I've got a friend of mine that drinks uh, the Kavita, the, the probiotic type of drink, and he's always doing the same flavor. Now, is there any big difference between the flavors? I don't know, but the variation makes a difference. You know, the, the most important thing that you can do is, is this stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? Absolutely. That's, that's the most important thing that you can do. And people don't want to do it, right? They just want a replacement. They want to be stimulated every time they take a drink. And there, there's a problem with that. Well, we talked, uh, I talked recently about the taste of water. Some people just don't like the taste of water and even clean water, fresh water. I mean, I've had water from a stream. I've had, you know, spring water. I've had water from all around the world. Most of us have. And it's just not my favorite thing to consume. I know it's healthy for me. So I try to do as much of it as I can. Yeah, well, it's, it's a matter of gaining your taste to adapt to it because really water should be almost having zero or very little taste. And it's, it's whole thing is to quench your thirst to, to basically help with your body and its detoxification process. And as we're drinking a lot of water, people tend to want sweeteners. Uh, uh, we're supposed to drink a lot of water. So we drink a lot of liquids, tea, coffee, and sodas, all of which often are artificially sweetened. We need to stay away from those, don't we? Oh, absolutely. Back to nature, as close to, to nature as you possibly can get is where your health is, right? I mean, it, man has developed a lot of these these substances to, to help sell products. So you have to be careful. You know, the, the truth isn't always there. Dr. Saleya, thank you very much for uh, this look at artificial sweeteners Stay away from them uh, if you can. Uh, get yourself off. Are they addictive, by the way? Like, we know sugar is addictive. Are artificial sweeteners addictive? You know, I think any, anything can become addictive. It, it really depends. If you're used to drinking a, a soda, in fact, a friend of mine used to live off of uh, RC Cola. And I think at one point they decided to not make it anymore. And so he was 
pretty upset. He had to switch to another soda. And uh, it, it was a real big difference in his life, not being able to consume that soda. It was, it was, it was very interesting to hear. Oh, I, and every soda has a different, a, a different flavor. Um, I like uh, my favorite sodas when I'm drinking them, uh, and I stay away from others. I really do. Well, Dr. Saleh is a functional medicine specialist, and he has a special offer for you, a free consultation for 15 minutes. Go to drsaleh.com, D-R-C-E-L-A-Y-A.com, drsaleh.com. Poke around a little bit. Look at some of the videos. Listen to the audios. Read the articles that Dr. Saleh uh, writes, and take advantage of this free 15-minute consultation. That's drsalea.com. And, of course, visit me at latenighthealth.com where we have Dr. Saleh as a regular feature of Late Night Health. Uh, Dr. Saleh, thank you very much for today's uh, episode. Thanks, Mark. And remember, go drink your water. I'm going to do that right now. Here's to you.